The rocky outcrop of the Acropolis and the splendid, seemingly everlasting ruins lying on top of it have always inspired a sense of awe in me. Every time I come here, I'm reminded of the impressive legacy the ancient Greeks have left behind, much of which has directly influenced our culture and way of life. Athens is the cradle of Western civilization, and as the birthplace of democracy and philosophy, it's giving us some of the most brilliant thinkers in history, from Socrates to Plato. Granted, you will need to use your imagination to see the splendor that once made Athens the heart of the ancient world. At first glance, the Greek capital is not the prettiest. In the decades following World War II, its population grew dramatically, from 700,000 to nearly 3.5 million, resulting in uncontrolled development and the thousands of ugly buildings you see today. I, for one, think Athens is a bit misunderstood. People tend to see it as a place that is lost in history, where the past will always look shinier than the future. I can see why, but I believe that it would be a mistake to think Athens is nothing more than a bunch of old stones. This is a vibrant metropolis, with beautiful street art, a strong coffee culture, busy markets and a bustling nightlife. In this video, I will show you the city's famous sites as well as some of its lesser known corners. In truth though, there is only one way to kick off your visit to the city. Your first encounter with the Acropolis takes your breath away, as you walk up the monumental gate known as Propylia. You will need to elbow your way up the staircase, which gets very busy. Up on your right, built on a bastion, you will notice the tiny and elegant Temple of Athena Nike, with its ionic columns. Another highlight is the Erechtheion, whose most famous feature is the porch of the Caryatids, a loggia with six draped female figures working as columns. But the real showpiece of the Acropolis, and one of the most iconic monuments in the world, is the imposing Parthenon. This former temple was dedicated to the goddess Athena, and is widely recognized as the best example of Greek architecture. It's huge, measuring 70 meters in length and 30 in width. Over the centuries, the Parthenon was turned into a Christian church first and into a mosque later under the Ottomans. Despite its evolving role, the structure largely remained intact. What really damaged it was a mortar round fired by the Venetians in 1687 during the Great Turkish War. This is my third time here in Athens and my third time up the Acropolis. I have to say, it doesn't get old. This place is incredible. And it's not just because the archaeology here is some of the best one that you can see around the world. I mean, just look at that, the Parthenon behind me. Uh, it's also because this is the heart of the city of Athens, and it's been the heart of the city of Athens for over two and a half millennia. You can just feel the power of this place. Uh, so come here early in the morning, though, because I'm telling you, it gets really hot here and very busy. The ruins we see today belong to buildings dating back to the golden age of the city, between 460 and 430 before Christ, when Pericles ordered the reconstruction of the site after it had been destroyed by the Persians. Take your time to explore the Acropolis. For many of you, this will be the highlight of your visit to Athens. And don't forget to take in the magnificent views all around. I've always loved the contrast between the stillness of the ruins and the chaos of modern Athens below. Many of the treasures, sculptures and architectural elements once found in the Acropolis are today on display in the beautiful New Acropolis Museum. These include the original Caryatids as well as half of the sculptures of the Parthenon, those that are in Captain Foreign Museums, that is. If you haven't had enough archaeology for a day, you can also visit the Roman Agora with its Tower of the Winds, regarded as the first ever example of a meteorological station, and the Temple of Olympic Zeus. Only 16 of the original 104 columns survive, but imagine how spectacular this temple must have looked when it was completed by Roman Emperor Hadrian in the 2nd century AD. I really enjoyed visiting the National Archaeological Museum. It has a huge collection of vases and statues. The most famous ones include a stunning bronze sculpture representing either Zeus or Poseidon, 
and the Jockey of Artemisium. The Mycenaean objects were also very impressive, especially the gold funeral mask known as Agamemnon's mask. The coolest artifact I've seen in the museum, though perhaps not the most spectacular, is the Antikythera mechanism. This mysterious object dates back to the first century before Christ and is the first known analog computer, a complex clockwork mechanism that was able to track the movement of the moon, sun and planets, and to even predict eclipses. No similarly elaborate technology is known to have appeared until the 1300s. Spend a day exploring Athens's many archaeological sites and you could be excused for thinking that the past here takes center stage, that this is a city of bygones. The real character of Athens, though, is not found in the noisy streets of Plaka or among the columns of an old temple. To discover it, you need to step out of the beaten path and explore some of the city's neighborhoods. One of them is Exarchia. This neighborhood is home to the city's very vocal anarchist movement. We were told to avoid it, but I actually enjoyed its grittiness and its vibrant streets. The walls of buildings in Exarchia are literally covered in graffiti, like blood squirting out of a fresh wound. Between 2009 and 2017, Greece endured a crippling economic crisis that caused salaries to fall by around 20% and unemployment to rise to 25%. The resulting desperation, anti-globalization sentiment, lack of trust in government and the rejection of capitalism seem to have found a striking, often beautiful expression in the street art I saw everywhere in Exarchia. If you're interested in understanding modern Greece, this should definitely be a stop in your itinerary. So another nice neighborhood that you want to explore if you come to Athens is Pagrati. Pagrati is the perfect place to escape the crowds and experience life as an Athenian. It may look a bit nondescript, but this leafy neighborhood is actually quite popular with locals. It's full of little cafes and nice little shops, um, so it's a nice place off the beaten track. Come here for lunch and a coffee in quiet Varnava Square. And when you're done, walk downhill all the way to the Panathinaikon, a spectacular stadium entirely built in marble. The only one in the world, apparently. The Panathinaikon hosted the opening and closing ceremonies of the first modern Olympics in 1896. From here, a short walk in the scorching heat leads you to the National Gardens, Athens' main park, and to Syndagma Square, the social and political center of the capital. Check out the imposing Vuli, the seat of the Greek parliament, and the peculiarly dressed Evzones standing guard in front of it. Syndagma is where Athenians traditionally take to the streets to celebrate or, more often, protest. Like many other parts of the city, it is not known for its striking beauty. Don't worry though, you can still take plenty of Instagrammable shots in the area just north of the Acropolis, Plaka. Fair warning, this place is overrun by tourists. Plaka is very lively, with shops and restaurants in every corner, many of them located on steep, picturesque staircases that cling to the hillside. To avoid the hordes of cruise ship passengers, climb to the highest part of Plaka, Anafiotica, for many years home to the migrants from the Cycladic Islands who came to Athens in search of a better future. Immediately, Anafiotica's bougainvilles and white houses will transport you to the alleys of Mykonos and Santorini. Up here, the traffic and noise of Athens feel miles away.
Right next to Plaka is Monastiraki, another must-do while in Athens. The city's flea market is here, but these days most of it caters for mass tourism, with a lot of Athens magnets and cheap figurines of gods. Uh, make sure you go into the side streets because that's where you find uh, the really cool stuff from old typewriters to telescopes. Athens has many spectacular viewpoints, but my absolute favorite is the Lycabetus Hill. According to the myth, the goddess Athena dropped this limestone mountain, which she intended to use for the construction of the Acropolis, upon receiving bad news as she got back to the city. As I look at the immense city in front of me, the sun slowly making its way below the horizon, I can't help but think of how pretty Athens looks. Traditional beauty is overrated anyway. Socrates once said, the years wrinkle our skin, but lack of enthusiasm wrinkles our soul. On the outside, Athens might look a bit shabby, but its legacy and passionate, resilient attitude are clearly visible in its busy streets, its countercultural movements, and in the spirit of its people. The city's soul is alive and kicking. <laughs>